uh, we'll, um, we'll we'll see how uh, how Charles does this week. Okay. One day at a time, Jerry. Yeah. So Kate is here. So we are understanding. Last time we have understood what exactly is understanding and clarity. And that understanding and clarity has to do with processing in the mind uh, by thinking, here this is, and here I am. So what exactly is the entire journey of the Eastern wisdom is that we start by becoming a seeker, and then the seeker undergoes follows these principles and understands there is a clarity. So when I have a clarity, then what happens? My departure and my arrival point is clear. Otherwise, we talk one minute of instant meditation. Awakening takes place. So what you are awakened to? You are awakened to more stress because one minute does not help. So you see that? So first, seeker. Now that seeker is naturally focused to understand clarity. When you have a clarity, you follow the practice, you change your experience, and ultimately, as you know, uh, uh, Jerry was talking about that, it has brought changes in the life. That is what is becoming a seeker. Seeker belongs to the different world. Seeker does not belong to the world of stress, anxiety, reaction, blame, complaint. No, no, not at all. And once you continue the practice, the realization takes place. Realization takes place. This is what we have understood. Huh? It is good idea. I'm just throwing an idea that you can. You already have the previous uh, uh, previous files, audio files. So it is a good idea to have to go through all those files and make a bullet points in your mind. So they are the principles. So you start living into that. And once you start living into that, what will happen? One example, and then we will go <laughs> deeper. So what will happen? You have that oh, a seeker never blames and complains and reacts. Now you are in front of a person with mind has always been blaming and complaining and reacting. But now that principle lives in your mind. Ah, mind says, hold on. No way. You know, it gives you a different level of awareness. You know, do you see that? It gives you a different level. Oh, let us leave it, you know. Oh, hey, how are you doing? So you, rather reacting, you praise and appreciate. That, that guy has taught you not to react. Did you see that? That, that idea... Uh, awakens the wisdom in you. That is what we say, the wisdom. This is, you know, this gives you a long journey ahead. So what, what we are understanding in the word, Viveka, I have repeated hundreds of times. Now you also can speak about it, Viveka, discernment. So we will pick up in a few sessions how the Viveka changes the daily living. What causes the wrong and wrong notion, wrong thinking in my head, and how to correct it by Viveka. And we will pick up briefly one part of the religious Viveka. All the religion at the surface level teaches us do's and don'ts, but they don't guide us it comes through the Viveka. It comes basically through the Viveka. Otherwise, we suppress. Then we will understand what is right and wrong Viveka. 
good and pleasant viveka goals and means viveka whole and the part viveka sorrow and happiness viveka and then the viveka i am not the body i am the owner of the body i am not the house i am the owner of the house and then we will also pick up ah uh, how to cultivate viveka in daily life and we are a seeker a lot of questions are there it's a long journey now what we have understood we have understood viveka means a cognitive ability in the intellect that takes over the mind that is habitual instinctive and impulsive unknowingly you raise a long stick and still your dog pet is there the dog is alarmed instinctive impulsive now i see you have raised you raised the stick we we are calm do you see that so now we are going little deeper i ah like you all the seekers to pay little attention what we are doing in viveka we are talking you know we are thought 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 so thought is a product of knowledge isn't it i know you it is a product of knowledge take one example ah huh? going deeper in the viveka so first thing to understand when i say i know take an example i know sam it appears as one one sentence it is a thought thought gives me a knowledge what is that knowledge perception experience whatever you say uh, they all are synonyms perception i perceive you that's how i know you i have a knowledge about sam i experience sam so on so on so it is all about thought now i say when i say that i know sam it is one sentence we are going into viveka little deeper and once you live into that awareness how uh, can i say 80% of the things are done or maybe 100% depending on you now what our masters say our masters teach is every thought has four aspects when i say i know david it has four of aspects take an example first aspect is object what is an object for me when i say i know david david is an object right then i have a perception huh? i see david second part third there is a thought what is that thought i know david or i do not know david and what is the fourth part can you guess consciousness every thought has four aspects what we understood last week clarity ha huh? i think you got it clarity here is neighbor's house here is my house ha huh? clarity i do not need to separate physically i need to separate intellectually mentally by thinking now can i separate in this thought the four aspects object perception knowledge or experience is the second third is the thought that i express fourth is the consciousness now tell me which one is totally independent and others are dependent object perception thought they are dependent they vary they change fourth one consciousness never changes that is me that is you that is real self here and now are you getting it it's all a matter of awareness 
It's all a matter of awareness. Now, let me add another principle here. What is false is seen in ignorance and in knowledge. What is delusion, hallucination, a psychiatrist, you know, and psychotherapist in modern psychology may talk of a lot of stuff. They have already categorized 300 mental disorders. There will be more. I'm only asking them, what about peace and happiness? Now, remember all the time. What is false is seen in ignorance and in knowledge. Can I add another point? Can be falsified in knowledge. And anything that is falsified is not me, cannot be. Am I being too complex? Take an example. Is a husband independent or is man independent? They do the example. Does man depends on the husband or does husband depends on the man? If there is no man, there is no husband. If there is no girl, there is no wife. Right? If there is no water, there is no wave. Are you getting it? So the wave is seen in ignorance in fact, it is water. Am I right? So husband, soulmate, sour mate, loveful life, loveless life is seen in ignorance. <laughs> Are you getting it? Body, I am the body, is seen in ignorance and in knowledge. I'm the real self, finished, here and now. No? Yes? Doubt? When I say I am the real self, I am the pure consciousness, and it is the truth, it is all pervading, it is present everywhere, it is present here and now, but I don't see it. It is partially seen. Real self is partially seen in ignorance, fully seen in knowledge. That is why we say meditation reveals the knowledge of the real self. Goal of meditation, revelation of the real self. Did you get it? Take another example. I don't see the sun. It is clouded. How can you see the sun without the sunlight? The sun is present there. So, sun is partially seen here and now, fully seen in knowledge. It's not very tough to understand. That's why I covered what exactly is the clarity. So, I see there is one real self pulsating in everyone. You see, here is a teacher, and here I am a seeker. No, there are no two.
four aspects. Remember, any thought has four aspects. One is the object. Second is the perception. So after perception or the knowledge, I have a thought. I see that. Object is Kate. Then I perceive. Then I say I know Kate. This is a thought. And behind that thought is a consciousness. That consciousness is independent. There are many thoughts. There are many objects. There are many perceptions. They vary. They change all the time. I remain only one all the time. That is the goal of meditation. Are you getting it? Just, you need to be simply aware. You need not to do anything. That's why the mindfulness of meditation is known as effortless, natural process. You see how you become a seeker? By clarity and understanding. Otherwise, we say, close your eyes, meditate. <laughs> We are not going anywhere. <laughs> are you getting it? Let me repeat it again. Anything that appears and disappears is false. That is seen in ignorance. Apply this principle to the body. But it takes birth at one time, goes away second time, body is false. We want to discover an existence or something that is totally independent, that is all pervading, that never changes. We use the word Sakshi, translated into English as witness consciousness. Continuously work this week. What to work? The moment you express a thought, become a scientist. Let me separate. What is the thought? What is the perception? No, what is the object? What is the perception? What is the thought? And they all depend on the consciousness. Remove the consciousness. Can you have a thought? Can you have a perception? Can you have an object? That is what happens in deep sleep. Another example, that is what happens in deep sleep. Mind is not there. Body is not there. Perception is not there. Did you understand that? So how we, uh, the teachers in the Eastern Wisdom, teaches us step by step. But question arises that after I wake up, I have a memory of a sound sleep. So I express the thought from where it comes. I will answer later. That is the process of viveka, discernment. When you discern, means clarity is there. The intellect takes over the mind, and the mind is absorbed into a meditative state, and the real self is revealed. Can I see you without my eyes as a vision? No. But can I see without the mind? No. But can the mind function without consciousness? So the sense organs are dependent, mind is dependent, consciousness is independent, and that independent entity is me, you, only one real self. Well, I've been talking about real self, real self, real self. But we, we have to understand.
You have to understand it. Pay attention. Again, look at, look through the sense organs, whatever you see in your room, in your house, before the computer. And then put this statement, false is seen in ignorance. Can be falsified by knowledge. Knowledge is truth, it cannot change. Knowledge is knowledge. Sam is scratching his head. Yeah, it's going deeper. <laughs> Do you see that? That is the beauty of the journey of the Eastern wisdom when we are committed. These things can be only told when you are a seeker. Not to a layman, you know, tell me, prove, give me proof of meditation. Give me your proof that you exist. Wait, we have to go deeper. How long we will? So, removing again, the wave is seen in ignorance. Fact is that the truth is that it is water. Am I right? So, can I, if I want to know water, do I separate physically the waves from the water? Or do I know it inside? I have to know it inside. That is why Viveka, the principle of Viveka has been created. Can I separate wave from the water? Answer is no. Can you think a little more deeper? The false cannot exist without real self. Conclusion, real self is partially seen in ignorance, fully seen, fully known, fully experienced, fully perceived in knowledge. And that is what we are doing. Are you clear? I will find my real self after 10 years. You will never find it. <laughs> 10 years, mind has come, time and space. Whatever is time and space is constantly changing, gives a false perception. We are caught in it and then we suffer. <clears throat> Blueness exists because of the sky. If the sky is not there, if the truth is not there, no way. <clears throat> if the real self and the consciousness is not there, forget about the sense organs, the body, the breath, and the mind, etc. They are seen in knowledge. No, they are seen in ignorance. Can I falsify it? Yes, I can falsify it. What can be falsified is not me. What is falsified is constantly changing. Last example, I am stressed. What is an object? Object is stress. What is perception? Feeling, experiences, sensation. That converts into a thought that I am stressed. Right? And behind that thought, there is a consciousness. Nothing happens to that consciousness. Do whatever you want to do. 
do you ever say that I have many consciousnesses? One consciousness of stress, one consciousness of love, one consciousness of hate. Do you ever say that? No. Consciousness never changes. It is all pervading. Do you ever say that my consciousness has gone out of the body in deep sleep? Then you are gone. <laughs> that consciousness is present in three states. Waking, dreaming, sleeping. That is present everywhere. Understand that. Think of this. Recall all those uh, sessions that you have understood. And once you have understood, remember what is understanding and clarity. That you can separate from is false. And once we live into that state, the life changes, life transforms. So let us start our practice.